Welcome to my weekly planner template in Notion. So I'm going to go through how I plan my week in Notion using my templates headquarters. Link is in the description if you're interested. I can see it as a week. I can see it as an all this week, which is basically the tasks that I have completed. This here is filtered to only show me tasks that aren't completed, which is very, very useful. And I have my month view. And I also have my day view. Don't worry, all of this is connected. I've seen a lot of other templates where nothing is connected and you have to like move stuff about. It's nothing like that. If I add something here, blah, blah, you can see that it shows up here. So the my day today section here allows me to actually organize this by time blocking. So let's say this is 8 a.m. and I can add something here. And as you see, it ends up here as well. So this is blah. And I can say that that is at 11 a.m. And I can start planning out my day here and here. And if I see there's too much going on in this day, then I can just drag the tasks to the next day and it gets removed from here. It's a really, really useful way of working. Then down here, I have my task list in order. So it's ordering it actually using the Eisenhower technique, which I absolutely love. And it's probably one of my favorite features in this template. So let's say that this is not important and not urgent. Then let's say that blah blah is somehow very important and it's super urgent. As you can see, it actually jumps up in the queue here, which is so cool. So when I'm planning out my week, I don't have to sit and wonder, oh, what should I prioritize? This is ordering it for me. It's telling me in order here. It's sorting it by urgency and importance. I absolutely love this feature. I just think it's so useful. There's other stuff here like my projects and workspaces and life buckets. I won't talk about that today. There is a link in the description to the full tour today. I just want to talk about actually planning out your week. All right, so I've added some fake tasks in here. One thing that has helped me so much, A, is the Eisenhower method. But the second thing is understanding what state of mind is required in order to do this task. Now, this might seem like another step that we have to do just for doing a task. However, it actually helps less with the doing of the task and more of the planning of the week. So this is very important for a weekly planner. So writing a report, that's going to require flow state for me. I need to be in a really focused state of mind in order to do this task. Then writing a resume, that's going to be a flow state for me as well. And obviously I can answer the urgency and importance for this as well. And this will get changed then in all of the relevant places. Then for answering emails, to be honest, that's not that cognitively demanding. That's a pretty easy task. It won't be labeled as a quick task. Quick tasks are stuff that takes like five minutes or less, but this might be 20, 30 minutes of work, not too cognitively demanding. So I can label that as easy. And then make presentation, that is also going to be a flow task. That is going to involve a lot of cognitive demand. I have to be very focused when doing that. Now I have a rule for myself and obviously you can set your own rules, but my rule is I can only have two flow tasks in a day. That's because the average person can only actually concentrate for four hours a day. And because everything is working together here in my weekly plan, I can see that, okay, write reports. I'm gonna do that from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Make presentation, that's probably gonna take me a few hours. Let's say that takes me to 2 p.m. And answering my emails might take me from 2 to 2.30, something like that. But realistically, after 2.30, I'm not going to have a lot of energy to write my resume. I'm going to be exhausted, most realistically, to do another very cognitively demanding task. So it's kind of unrealistic for me to have this here on my day plan. So I can see my weekly, and I can see my day, and I can start piecing this all together, almost like a bit of a puzzle. And I realize it, it's unrealistic for me to write my resume today. So then what I can do is write resume, I can just drag that to the next day, it gets removed from here, and now I have a more realistic day here. Often what happens is, is people plan out these days that are just absolutely filled and every single second has a purpose, which is great, but the problem is it's just not realistic. You're probably not going to be able to work for 15 hours a day. So what we're doing here is not just ensuring that we have enough time to do it, but using this state property, we ensure that we have enough mental capacity for it. We want to ensure that our brain can actually handle taking on all of this work. Now there's a bunch of other features here like notes and resources and you know, all of this other stuff, which I won't get into. But one thing that is very important when planning out your week is a time tracker. Now time trackers are very important for two reasons. One, you want to know how long did a task take me to do. But the second reason is for planning out your week. If you can see in the past, this is how long a task took me approximately, then you know how long to actually give yourself to do that task. This is called Parkinson's law. The concept is that work expands to fill the time given to complete it. So for example, if I gave myself this report from 8 a.m. to instead 3 p.m., 
then it's going to take me that amount of time. But if I only gave myself to 11 a.m., then it will only take that amount of time. Now, obviously, you have to be realistic with this stuff as well. I can't say write report 8 a.m. to 8.02 a.m. That's unrealistic. And that's why this time tracking is so important. So let's write how long all of these tasks took in minutes. So let's say write report took 180 minutes. And now what I also want to do here is just say which bucket and project it belongs to. So buckets are the overarching different areas of your life. So write report, that is part of my job. So I'll click here and then click on job. This belongs in that. And then here I can click and say which project it belongs under. So let's make up a fake one called the blah report and click there, create new, and it automatically gets created. So now if I click away, this has been tracked in the back end. And I can also see here that write report is to do with the blah report. Then answer emails, that belongs under the admin bucket. For the time, let's say that it took me 30 minutes. And you know what? We don't need a project for answering emails, so I can click away. Make presentation. Let's say that this bucket belongs to, uh, let's say my business, so I can click here. And then project, we can say client number one, click on new client for the project. And now that has been added in the back end. And let's say that this took me 120 minutes. Now, because these are connected and it's the same database, I can see here my week view and my day view. And it's showing me this information here with all of these different properties, the importance, the urgency, the flow state, which bucket, which project it's related to and the minutes. This is so handy. And I can tick these off saying that I've done them. As you can see, it actually gets removed from here. That's because I have this filter here saying I only want to see stuff that I haven't done. But of course, if I click on all this week, I can see the tasks that have been completed as well. So let's scroll down and go to the time tracker. Actually, before I do that, here's the time tracker. But before I do that, I just want to show you in blah report, this fake report we created. Here I can see all of the relevant project tasks, all of the relevant notes, and all of the relevant bottlenecks. And under completed tasks here, I can see this right report task. It's showing me everything that is relevant, everything that I need. It's just so handy. Again, link is in the description if you want to see the full tour or just wait to the end as it is the next video that comes up. So if I click on open and full page, you can see here the time tracker. It is broken down by bucket, by project, and even the month's bucket and the month's projects. So this is honestly probably one of the most important things that I've ever done in terms of my productivity. Knowing exactly where my time is going based on buckets and projects has been the most useful thing. So as you can see here, it's automatically doing all the maths for me. I can see my minutes, I can see my hours broken down. Okay, admin, I've spent 30 minutes, which is 0.5 hours. Business, I've spent 120 minutes, which is two hours in total. And obviously if you add more stuff here, so let's say this is 60, I could see here that the sum is 180 minutes slash three hours. All of this is being tracked in the back end for me. And it's been one of the most useful things for my productivity. When I'm doing a weekly plan, when I'm trying to plan out my week, knowing how long tasks take means that I can accurately schedule out a week that is actually good and useful and sustainable for me. If you want to learn more about the projects, the workspaces, the life buckets, and all the other features that I have built into this, then watch this video here. I cannot recommend it enough. It has over 900 users and a five-star rating. Headquarters was built to make you organized, productive, and motivated. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that it helps you.